Hey guys, Jim here. Today I'm going to share with you something very special, very, very special for me as a matter of fact, something that uh, has been considered a long time grail of mine. And I realize that sometimes as collectors, uh, some people tend to throw around the term grail to where it almost loses its effectiveness, its real true core meaning. When I use the term, I use it in the most uh, purest way possible. And it really means for me that it's an object that is almost completely unattainable, whether it be uh, due to price or due to availability. And in this case, it was most certainly availability. What we have right here is a very, very special piece for me. This is number seven of 10 that were ever made of a collaboration project between Joel Perella and Brian Ty. They called this the Bengal. And the Bengal uh, was made in two different variations. The tactical Bengal, which uh, this is, and the dress Bengal, which had uh, just beautiful Damascus and, and all this amazing, amazing work that you guys know Brian does. And it came out, I don't know if it was late 2009, early 2010, but, you know, just about four years ago. And they made 10 exclusively for True North Knives. This was at a time where I was just starting to get interested in more expensive mid-tech and custom knives. And I came across a picture of it. I don't even remember how or why, but I saw a picture of it and I was completely blown away and I knew I had to have it. Searched it out, found out uh, about True North Knives at the time, saw it there, and they had, I th at the time, I think they had one left. I went nuts, and before I could even pull the trigger on it, it was gone. I was like, ah, oh, crap. And I didn't really notice that there were only 10 made. So I contacted Brian Ty immediately. It was the very first time I reached out to him. And I said, uh, I, I know they're all sold out over at that, at that website, over at that dealer. Can you make me one? And then he told me the story. He's like, no, I'm sorry, I can't. He goes, it was a limited edition, numbered, only 10 were made. And as much as I'd love to make you happy, I can't, you know, I can't take away from the collectability for other people uh, by making a, uh, an 11th one, basically. So I was greatly, greatly disappointed, but that was what got me inspired to own one of Brian's knives. So that was the time where we ordered the Tycoon. And I love my Tycoon. And this was really the first step for me to get into more serious knives. Up until that point, it was all production knives for me. And I was perfectly happy with it. And, and you know, I still have a few production knives, and I'm still perfectly happy with them as well. But this represented the next level for me. And this has pretty much corrupted me and changed how I look at knife collecting uh, ever since that day. So when I saw that uh, Joel was selling off a few knives... That was not part of the listing, but I said, you know what? I, I got to try. I really, I have to take a shot at this. So I sent Joel a message. I said, listen, my ultimate dream knife has been the Bengal. They're gone. They're done. I know this. Please tell me you have one somewhere that you're willing to let go of. And he messaged back. I mean, like within probably five minutes, he says, actually, I do. I have one that's completely mint, never been touched. And yeah, I'll be happy to sell it to you. And I went nuts. Now, the funny thing about this is these were not overly expensive when they were initially offered. I want to say they were in the range of around, and again, my memory is a little fuzzy. I want to say right around $650, $700 possibly. You know, it could be off by a couple of dollars there, but I mean, it was a really, really great deal. It may have been as high as $750, but I don't think it was any higher than that. Uh, for the tactical version. And I said, you know what? I don't even care what the price is. Shoot me a number. I want it. And he made me what I think was a fair deal. I mean, obviously, it's it's worth a lot more now. Everything that Joel does, and you've got to realize he's partnered with some of the, the, the greatest makers that are there. Um, you know, Pat Crawford, Alan Elishowitz, uh, Greg Lightfoot, uh, Brian Ty, And everything that he does is specified as a limited edition, a numbered marked limited edition. And 
that raises the value and over just a short amount of time the value can skyrocket I mean his designs as you can see are absolutely gorgeous I know this is not a knife that's going to appeal to everyone I think it leans a little bit more toward an art knife than a tactical knife but I think it combines everything uh, very nicely into the two if you look at the handle shape here you've got actually a fighter handle this is uh, very reminiscent of, of the, the Greg Lightfoot, you know, that, that full contact. You've got a bit of a pommel back here. Uh, I love the, the swedges that are cut into the frame there to allow your fingers to drop in. You've got a huge choil here for your finger to drop into. Uh, it has very much a fighter style handle on it. Let's talk about the specifications before I go off on too much of a ramble. And I'm going to apologize in advance. You guys know that I, I tend to ramble a little bit, but when I get this excited about something, it's a little bit harder for me to stay on track. So let's go over a few basic things. Uh, first off, you're looking at a, a four and a quarter inch blade. So it's a really, really big, heavy piece of steel right there. Uh, about 9.8 inches overall length. So yeah, this is a pretty massive knife. The weight's not that bad though. It's only about five and a half ounces. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about that and why in just a few minutes. Uh, let's see, the blade steel is uh, Latrobe BG42. And I actually like BG42. A lot of people aren't working with it anymore. For a while there, there were a lot of people working with it. Uh, even Chris Reeve worked with it for a little while. Um, it, it's a blade steel that kind of fell out of favor, at least with U.S. makers, uh, over the past few years. A lot of the Canadians, um, you, know, you look at you know Greg Lightfoot and you look at um, Brian Tai, uh, they still use a lot of BG42. It's actually an amazing steel. It's got really great... Uh, edge retention, amazing corrosion resistance compared to what you're going to see in your more standard steels these days, uh, particularly um, uh, steels like D2. D2 is a great steel, don't get me wrong, I have plenty of knives in D2, but the corrosion resistance isn't really all that great. And that's something that a lot of people are going to have a, a concern with if they're going to have a knife like this that they're going to collect and own for a, a seriously long period of time. Uh, one of the properties in BG42 is a uh, the molybdenum and that actually magnifies the high corrosion resistance that's in the high chromium content of the steel so you're getting something that's easier to sharpen than a lot of the common popular steels these days it's got a really good retention on that edge so it's not going to dull as quickly as a lot of them and it's going to be a lot harder for it to pit or rust so overall you've got just a fantastic quality steel here and my, uh, my Tycoon here is also BG42. I've had this since 09, and there's not a single indication of anything anywhere on this, uh, on this blade. Now, obviously, with the rust inhibitors that we're using these days, whether you're using a tough cloth or you're using the amazing Aegis Solutions, this stuff is a godsend. You guys really need to pick some of this stuff up. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit less of a concern if you know how to take care of your knives, but still, you, you want to start off with a really good quality blade steel. Now, I want to give you guys some macros of the amazing work that Brian Ty did here. Uh, many of you know I consider Brian to be a friend. I very much respect the work that he does because he really combines art with this practicality in the designs of his knives. Uh, if you haven't already, please see the review that I've done on my Tycoon. And I'll talk a little bit more about that there. I love how they brought the titanium up to a mirror finish almost in some areas. It's an all satin finish, pure titanium frame. Both sides are titanium. Uh, I did message Brian earlier. He didn't get it yet before I got a chance to upload the video. Uh, before I comment too much about the clip, I want to find out from him what the material was that he used for this uh, because it has a different luster to it. Besides the different finish, it has a different luster. So I'm thinking this might be a Dama steel clip. I don't want to say that for, uh, you know, to say it's 100% because I'm not sure yet. The flipping action is typical of the flippers that Brian made in the day before he went to IKBS. So it's going to be a solid flipper, but it's not going to rock it out. 
I love button locks. Button locks are extraordinarily strong, very, very secure. You, you will never hear anybody complain about having issues with a button lock. You know, it's not always going to be the most convenient locking mechanism to reach. A lot of people would prefer, you know, liner locks or frame locks, but everybody's going to be different on that. There is Joel's mark right there. Let me see if I can get the camera to focus. There we go. There is the numbering, number 7 out of 10. Nice clean pivot design. There's that beautiful clip. Now you guys know I will actually completely walk away from a knife purchase if it's a tip-down carry clip. On this, for obvious reasons, uh, there was no way in hell I was going to walk away from this. Beautiful polishing done in there. Back to the satin finish. And I love this pattern that he's milled into the frames. Just the whole thing. This is a true work of art, in my opinion. And like I said, it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea, and that's fine. But for me, this is one of the most beautiful knives I have ever seen. Now, from the years of looking at it, just looking at the pictures online, because that was the only way I was going to see one, it appeared to be a very large, bulky, thick, and heavy knife. And when you look at it in this angle and you see the deep swedges uh, that are carved into the titanium, it gives you the illusion that it's much thicker than it really is. When in fact, it is actually going to be as slim in its profile as the Tycoon. And that was something that completely surprised me. I did not expect that when I opened up the package from Joel today. I expect it to be very thick, massive, crazy, heavy, and it's not. It's wonderfully lightweight. Beautiful standoffs on there. Another signature of Brian's uh, to use a complete flow-through design with as little hardware as possible. You have three points of contact. Your standoff pillar here, standoff pillar here, and your pivot. That's it. Nice, clean, simple design. Finishing all the way around on this is exemplary. This is the, the type of finishing that you would see on a presentation grade knife. Now the funny thing is when I talked to Joel about this, he said uh, typically uh, these went in pairs with the tactical and the dress bangle. He goes, I've got a dress one as well if you want to buy that. And my response to him was, you know, the dress one was beautiful, gorgeous, amazing, but... I really try to stay away from Damasteel, Damascus, uh, Timascus, things like that, because I really carry all my knives. Every knife I have, it's funny, I posted a quick picture on Instagram the other day, um, made a few people chuckle about the wear that I have on my dyer wear, and we know how these things have skyrocketed in value recently. You know, the whole spine of my blade is, is marred up, and my titanium and everything else, because... I carry my knives. That's the way it is. I got, I got a scratch on my blade. I don't care. I carry my knives. I buy them to use them. I'm not just your typical collector that just wants to look at a pretty knife all day. So I actually kind of regret saying no to the dress version to have as a secondary one. Because if this one, being as beautiful as it is, blows me away the way that it does, I can only imagine how uh, incredible the dress version must be. But that's okay. This is certainly something that I'm going to be carrying as a daily carry. I know a lot of you guys are going to kind of cringe when you hear that. Oh my God, it's so beautiful and there's only 10 made. And pretty much the first time it goes in the pocket, you're going to start getting wear on the tie. I don't care. After all these years of pining for this knife, it's got to be used. It's got to be carried. You're going to see this on my show a lot. Absolutely. This is going to get this is going to get a lot of use at work. That's for damn sure. So I just wanted to share with everyone my excitement over this knife. Uh, a, a, I, I hope that all of you out there that have a grail that you've just been dying to get your hands on, you think you're never going to get it. Uh, maybe it's a Rexford injection hot hammered. Uh, maybe it's a, a, a Joe Kios. Maybe it's a uh, Kirby Lambert, maybe, I, you know, whatever it may be. Hold out hope, man. I just, I never thought I'd see this. You don't ever see these being sold. I've seen one available. Number five was made available, uh, Julie, over at uh, Arizona Custom Knives back in 2011. Had number five available for sale. I think she sold it for $7.75, if I'm not mistaken. 
really great price. And that's the only one that I've seen, period. The people that own these are not letting these go. And Joel and Brian have not come back together and made anything even somewhat similar to this. They've had a lot of projects over the years, but nothing like this. I consider this to be a very aggressive design. You've got the beauty. You've got the aggressiveness. You've got this incredible feeling in the hand. Oh. Yeah, there's just... Look at that blade sticking out there. This is the pinnacle of my collection right now. And you guys know, especially over the past two weeks, I've, I've amassed uh, uh, quite a nice uh, number of new acquisitions. And in the next few days, I just got my, uh, my tracking number today for my RJ Martin Q36. Thank you, by the way, to all of you that have been sending me messages here and there going, hey, if I see one, I know you've been mentioning that you want one. I'll let you know if I see one. I really appreciate you guys. And it was actually a... Uh, a uh, heads up from a friend uh, from Barry from uh, New to Knives over in, uh, from his channel. And he uh, he text messaged me and goes, dude, go to the cove right now. And boom, there it was. I didn't even try to haggle with the guy. Nothing. I just went, I want it. I'll take it. Boom. Here's the money. So I, I still put this at the top of my collection right now. Here's the thing. When you've had you know a grail for that long, I mean, we're not talking, oh, I've been searching for one for six months. I mean, this has been a number of years. This has been just about four years now. There's a certain level of expectation. This is exactly what I told Brian and told Joel when I sent them quick messages when I first got it. I said, you know, there was a, the, the, the bar was set super high on this knife. It exceeded all of those expectations. You know how great it is to go to a, maybe, I don't know, go to a movie that has tremendous amount of hype built around it, and you're all excited about it, and, and you're thinking on your way into the theater, it's not going to be as good as the hype. It just can't be as good as, as all this hype surrounding it. And then you walk out of the theater stunned going, oh my God, that was one of the best movies I've ever seen. It was even better than all the things that I heard about it. That's how I feel about this. Seeing it in person, pictures have not done it justice. And I even did a very quick photo session with it uh, about an hour ago. Uh, I posted some pictures up on Instagram, on my Facebook. I'll use one here for the thumbnail for this video. In you know even my pictures, I cannot do this knife justice. To see the luster coming all off of all of this titanium, to see all of this stunning detail work, the fluting—it's it's a very light fluting around all of these concave edges. This thing is flat out incredible, and the more I look at it, the more details I see. It's a stunning work of art that's going to go in my pocket and be used as often as I can possibly throw it in there. As a matter of fact, I like it so much, I might even keep it with the tip down carry. Um, I had contacted Brian immediately. I gave him a quick call. I said, dude, I finally just scored the knife. I said, but you know, I despise tip down carry. Would you convert the clip for a tip up for me? He says, absolutely. I'm more than happy to do it. I'm really glad that you were able to get the knife. And now that I've got it, and it's such a huge knife, I'm going to try it tomorrow. I'm going to try carrying it tomorrow tip down. I despise tip down. I don't like the fact that, you know, you're grabbing your knife. Now, now you, you're forced to loosen your grip to let it fall into your hand. I, I don't like that. I want to grab my knife and pop it out, and it's in my hand exactly the way that I need it to be. I don't like changing the grip whatsoever when I go to deploy that knife. But given the size of the knife, it might actually work out okay. And I'm also not one of those guys that ever carries anything in the same pocket as my knife ever, period, for any reason whatsoever. So I don't have that concern of, on a flipper anyway, of reaching down in my pocket and my pocket has somehow pushed the blade open a little bit and my hand goes in and then goes all the way up the blade. And if you think that I'm making that up, talk to Vance. Happened to Vance. He got the worst cut, he said, of his entire life. The blade went all the way through to the bone into his finger uh, on a flipper knife that was tip-down carry. And that's just another reason I will not do tip-down carry. But uh, I'm going to try it out, see how it works out tomorrow. And uh, if it doesn't work out, fine. This takes a quick trip to Canada. He makes a quick little modification, sets up my clip on the other side, and we're good to go. Uh, regardless, this is absolutely, and I don't ever say this, 
but this is absolutely a lifelong keeper in my collection. It will never go anywhere. And I really can't look across my collection, and I've got some, some knives that I personally feel are exceptional knives. Everything's for sale for a price, almost everything. This one, I, I wouldn't care what you offered me. Honestly, this is a true keeper. Uh, so to Joel, on the very off chance that you get a chance to watch this video, thank you so very much for the opportunity to own what I feel is a masterful work of art. Uh, to Brian, thank you for constructing such an amazing knife. You, you completely outdid yourself. Uh, and your designs and your, your manufacturing and your quality continues to raise the bar every year. Every time you put out a new model, it's, it's even more jaw-dropping than the last. I'm going to let it go with that, guys, uh, because honestly, at this point, I can't really focus. I'm that excited. I just want to sit here and play with the knife, and I'm just going to wander in my thoughts. So hopefully I covered all the areas. Hopefully I've answered any questions that there may be on this. If you have any questions or any comments, please feel free to leave them down below. You guys know that I do my best to try to answer everybody. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off for now and go play with my knife. Thank you so much for watching.